Welcome to my course. Uh, we are going to look at SQL for data analytics. Uh, uh, and let's get started. We are at section one and lecture one. Now, before we move ahead, I would just like to remind you that this course is completely hands on, which means that we are going to run some code on uh, every lecture that uh, we are going to do with. Uh, the thing that we are going to get started with would be to design uh, a simple table for us to understand how to make a table. Uh, and then once we have the table, then we'll start thinking on uh, what we can do with the data. Uh, we would understand what we can do, what we cannot do, what we should do, what we should not do in SQL. Uh, our goal is to understand data wrangling using groups, joints, and union to get the data in the format that we need. Generally, we are trying to draw an equivalence between Excel, like we look up uh, uh, pivot tables and uh, all those kind of features. We are trying to do the same using group buys and joints and union in SQL. When the data is big, uh, we cannot use Excel. So uh, that's one of the motivation. But there are other motivation, like automating a lot of stuff and linking uh, uh, things uh, in your reporting framework and or different reasons why to learn SQL. We are going to look at that. So the ideas that we would get in data wrangling by this course uh, would help us to also use the same concepts in Python or R or SAS for that matter. So this course is uh, meant to be for non-programmers to uh, sensitize you to open up your mind uh, on how to use SQL in place of Excel or uh, how to use SQL and do like basic filterings and group by and joins and prepare the data in the form that you need. We are looking at different versions and flavors of uh, SQL that are available in the market right now. Now different companies uh, private companies and also uh, open source communities are using uh, SQL, which is a language. Uh, the most common uh, SQL distribution comes from Microsoft, where Microsoft has used SQL, built up their own uh, SQL server and management studios and the GUI tools and everything to work with SQL. Then we have Oracle, which is again a private uh, company. It's called Oracle uh, SQL uh, PL. Uh, then we have MySQL, which is open source, but it's taken care by Oracle, but it's it's free. Most of the web community and uh, the one that we are going to use would be MySQL because it's open source and it's free. Then we have PostgreSQL, which is again open source, which is giving uh, competition or which is uh, uh, equivalent to Microsoft's uh, SQL version. And then we have the DB2, which is by IBM. So these are the different distributions. Only uh, MySQL and Postgres is open source and free to use. Uh, SQL Server is being managed by Microsoft. Uh, uh, Oracle has its own SQL and DB2 is by IBM, which works with COBOL. Now you would be uh, thinking why there are so many distribution and what's the idea? The idea behind this uh, different distribution is that uh, every SQL distribution that we want to buy gets integrated with our ecosystem uh seamlessly so if we are living in the windows world if all, all the operating system at our company is windows we are using c sharp we are using visual basic vba we are using excel then sql server gets integrated very easily and quickly and seamlessly like you could use the same username as your windows admin and so on and the security and everything so the integration becomes very easy and microsoft has put in a lot of research and tools to develop that uh, on the other hand, when we talk about Oracle, Oracle SQL is used uh, when we are doing more of analytics or Salesforce. Now, Oracle had a strategy that they acquired a lot of small analytical companies, so like supply chain. They acquired a lot of companies that do supply chain. So if you are in the supply chain world and we are using SQL to manage that data, then we would use Oracle. Uh, MySQL is mostly for web development. All the websites that we are using, like the WordPress website that I have for my company, uh, it's a very simple website, so they're using MySQL. Uh, a lot of open source companies are uh, open source community is pushing on for Postgres SQL, uh, which is giving competition or which is a counterpart of uh, SQL Server. And the very old system like the IRS or the healthcare medical system, they use the DB2, 
which is IBM, and they use COBOL and all those kind of uh, IBM proprietary tools to do that. So those are the distributions. When we look at the implementation right now that are available, we have AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. Azure belongs to Microsoft. Uh, AWS is Amazon. Uh, I have an account on AWS. Uh, I think 70 to 80 percent of uh, the market capitalization or like uh, uh, most of the revenues in the cloud, 70 percent of it is going to AWS. So I use AWS to run MySQL. So I'm my implementation platform is AWS and the distribution is MySQL that I would uh, use. But for this course, we are going to use MySQL on some uh, sandbox websites to uh, run our code. So this was about the versions and the flavor. You should be uh, pretty comfortable if somebody asks you uh, which SQL have you used. If you say MySQL and they would say that, but we use uh, SQL Server Management, so you should be able to tell that uh, the language remains the same. It's the Microsoft tools. And uh, you can also download Microsoft uh, Developer Edition SQL Server and check with that. So you should be able to talk about these stuff, uh, the distribution and the implementation. Because when you look at the job openings right now or different companies, they would say that we are using this, this, this on this, this, uh, whatever implementation platforms. They would say that we are using MySQL Server and we are using AWS or if it's a bank, uh, banks are generally using Microsoft uh, SQL Server and they're putting it on the Azure Cloud, all the Microsoft proprietary tools. So based on where you're going, you have to do that. Uh, since we want to learn basic SQL in this course, we are focusing on MySQL and we are not using an implementation platform. We are going to use a sandbox website. Let's look at the roles and the jobs available uh, in the SQL world. Now I'm trying to uh, simplify a lot of stuff just to uh, uh, make it easier for you to understand the kind of roles that you can get. Now one of the roles that is very common is business intelligence or uh, data analytics, uh, information system which is to make cubes, create a warehouse, uh, create the graphics on Tableau. This is like uh, the most uh, hot role right now because all of the companies have different databases uh, and different uh, department are using different SQL. The finance is using Oracle. Uh, the inventory management guys are using Microsoft and so on. And then you have to make sure that you have all the tools ready. You can create a warehouse of your data and then you can create reports or cubes or or uh, use that data for uh, any kind of an analysis. That's data analytics role. The other is database developer, which is like creating database, deciding the tables, how these tables are linked up, the security and all those kind of stuff. It's mostly designing and setting up databases. So you go there and you set up a database that they interact on a daily basis, which is a little different from the intelligence guys. Uh, then we have a dedicated role of uh, data warehousing and data mining. These guys don't work on the business intelligence part, but they work more on the extract, transform, load, also called the ETL. Uh, they load data from different sources, CSV files, uh, different databases, uh, even in Hadoop and big data world, and, and they get uh, everything ready to create the warehouse. Then we have an exclusive role coming up uh, uh, in the future uh, that's uh, going to be a lot in demand. It's it's very high in demand right now, which is the security. So we have database security expert who manages all kind of security related issues. And at the end, we have the database admin guys, which uh, takes care of your day-to-day -day data uh, for your company, uh, which is like the transaction processing. So if you have a company and people are buying something from you instantaneously you want to update your data which is like the sales data or something which is linked to your website and which is linked to your accounting system so you, the database that is used on a day-to-day -day basis which gets updated instantaneously which is the live data that's the OLTP data and that's the database admin guy so these are the different roles in this course we are focusing a little bit more on the first part which is data analytics and business intelligence although we are not going very deep but we are trying to understand how we can use the SQL to move some analytics out of Excel and draw a parallel. 
So that's going to be our focus in this course. Okay, in this section, which is section two, lecture four, we are going to look at how to run MySQL on ephemeral websites, which is like a sandbox or an online place where we can run our SQL code. So I'm talking about three websites uh, in this lecture, which is DB Fiddle, SQL Fiddle, and Rex Tester. There are others available. You can just uh, Google and find out. These websites are generally called Fiddle, F-I-D-D-L-E. Now we are going to use in this course DB Fiddle to run off uh, run all of our code and we would be using MySQL uh, distribution because that is the one that is used on the web uh, development world or on the web. Now I'm going to show you all the three websites and uh, talk a little bit about how they look like. This is uh, DB Fiddle. This is my favorite. In the SEMA SQL, where I'm hovering my mouse, we are going to put the code to create table and it says create table, insert and update. On the right side, I have query SQL, which is to query my tables. Now, uh, most of the times when we are going to work in analytics, we won't have the right to change the table. We'll just have the right to query the table. So we will have that more often. Uh, the other website is SQL Fiddle. Uh, which is not working right now. Uh, and the third one is Rex Tester. In Rex Tester, I can select any language that I want. So it works for a lot of uh, different languages. Uh, but what I'm interested right now is MySQL. If I go back to DB Fiddle and click on database, it allows me to switch between different database which means that I can run PostgreSQL, SQLite, and MySQL. Be reminded that it cannot run uh, SQL Server because it's a proprietary Microsoft uh, tool. It can also, it cannot run Oracle because again, Oracle is a proprietary tool. It cannot run DB2. It's a proprietary tool by IBM. Whereas SQLite, PostgreSQL, and MySQL are three open source distribution. MySQL is mostly used for the web development. PostgreSQL is used for all of your transactions, like if you are a company and you want to store uh, your business information. It's uh, more of a competitor of Microsoft SQL to give you a more holistic approach. If you are a finance company and you want to store tick by tick data or uh, uh, the data for analytics, then you're going to use PostgreSQL. It's more uh, robust to handle with a nice front end and everything. And then you have SQLite, which is a compact SQL, which is which you're going to use when you're using Python or some other language where you want to create something on the fly. It's a very light-based SQL. Uh, if I were to compare it, if you are installing Microsoft SQL Server and the front-end tool or Oracle, it's going to cost like, I don't know, 4, 5, 6 GB, whereas SQLite could be installed in only like half MB or 300 KB. So SQLite is a very light version, a very lightweight, a very compact version of SQL. So these are the three that's available here. Uh, and Compile MySQL Online is going to do the same stuff. Uh, but my favorite is DB Fiddle, which we are going to use all of the time. Now many of the time, so one or the other website is down. So while I'm making this video, SQL Fiddle is down. So then you're not going to use uh, SQL Fiddle and you can use DB Fiddle. Sometimes DB Fiddle is down. So whichever is on, we are going to use that. So coming back to uh, my slide, uh, uh, some of them support uh, SQL Server, some of them does not support SQL Server. Uh, this supports uh, a lot of different languages. This supports Postgres. This supports uh, SQL Server. So now once I have SQL Server, I can run a lot of Microsoft tool. And you see here it says SQL Server Express Edition. So this is more harder to get because uh, Microsoft does not uh, allow us to use that tool uh, for uh, open source development world. Uh, but our case in this, uh, in, in this course, I'm going to focus more on DB Fiddle. Hello everybody, uh, we are looking at tables, uh, 
create table command. In this section, we are going to look deeper into what a create table command is and change it to see what we can do. Okay, I pasted this code and I ran it and it said query executed in this. Now, if I want to see what's inside the table, I'm going to write select star from and the name of the table followed by semicolon. It's going to show me what's inside the table. So this is inside the table. What if I want to add one more column? Uh, right now we have five column. The first column is person ID. Second column is hero name. The third column is age. The fourth column is asset and the fifth column is sector. What if I want to add one more column for gender? Once I want to do that, I have to define what is uh, the type of this column. So I'll say that it's a var card, and I'm saying that at most it will have like 10 columns. Let's see what happens now. If I run it, there is a column gender and it's null. Remember, there is no error here because we are trying to insert data into this column. And since we did not insert anything into gender, uh, it ran fine. The only thing is that our gender has none. So what do we have to do in case we want to put something in gender? We have to write a gender here. And we have to write whatever the gender is. So I'm going to write male. Now when I run this, I get the gender. So it was not throwing an error when I'm not trying to import. But what it means is that we can insert the columns that we would like to want and the remaining things would get inserted uh, automatically and they would be null. A null is something that's not present. It's different from string. It's different from zero. It just means that there is no value inside that. Sometimes we might confuse string with a null. String, empty string is an empty string. It's not null. Null means nothing. Uh, because you can still uh, do concatenation with an empty string. You can still do multiplication or addition to a zero. So if you add something to zero, uh, it becomes whatever the number is, zero plus five is five. Uh, if you concatenate hello with uh, an empty string, it becomes uh, uh, different. So I can make this as an empty string and still run it. This time gender is an empty string. So that's the difference between null. Uh, I can also manually write null for explicitly saying that this is a null. So this is how I would use null with the create table statement. If I were to introduce more stuff, I have to put a comma here and copy the same line. And run it. So it says that there is a problem. And the problem is at line three. So let's see. I'm trying to insert this, uh, insert into command, and it says there is a problem. So check syntax correspond to, and let's see what the problem is. To Spider-Man 32, fail, null, and these are the values. Oh, I should not write values. I have to just write what values I want to insert. So that's the problem, and I run it, and now it works. So if I were to insert multiple stuff, I have to copy this, put a comma, and write it. So this time it's the third. And since I did not make this as a primary index or I have no constraint to not repeat it, I can have the same values. Still run it. If I don't want to give this gender, I can remove it from here. I can remove it from here. And I can still run it. It says I did not remove it from here, so I can run it. So this is about adding more columns and using null to run it. I'm going to paste this code. What I want you to go ahead is try this code on your own, add few more entries. If you face any trouble, paste the error and paste the problem that you have. Thank you for watching this video. I am on section 2 and lecture 6. Um, in this lecture, we are going to understand data types. Uh, the three most common ones that we are going to deal with are integer characters and boolean. Uh, 
we can use single quotes or double quotes and some of the some of the distribution of SQL others have a trouble we are going to uh, try to create that error and see it's hard to remember so don't worry about remembering that but just remember that throughout the programming world whether it's Python or SQL or R or any programming language whenever you want to use a character you have to give single quotes or double quotes but you don't have to do that in boolean or in number uh, boolean are true or false a uh, logic kind of a statement most of the times we use boolean when we want to use and or zor and those kind of stuff and also we want to understand uh, color convention because color convention is going to help us capture the reserved keyword and the string number so let's go ahead and check it. Uh, I want to first take you through to the Code Beautifier website. Uh, the link is there on the slide. And if you look at the Code Beautifier website, uh, on the left hand side, I tried to paste a code, um, whatever I had. On the right hand side, I see the beautified code. Uh, if you see on the left, I have some extra spaces which is creating trouble. My bracket open here is in a new line when I could save it by putting it in the same line. Uh, my attendees, these names uh, were in different lines. Uh, it does not make sense to have a lot of space wasted for that. So the beautifier put it in the same line. The other thing the beautifier did is that the values, it put it in the same line. It gave the color coding. If there is an error, then this is not going to turn green. My strings are not going to turn green if there is an error. Uh, this null is a missing character, which I have intentionally put it here. Create table, var, car, and teacher, insert, and the numbers. These are color coded by blue. Uh, create table is a reserved keyword, insert is a reserved keyword. So uh, the other things that I'm giving my variable names are in black. So the, the beautifier is going to beautify all of our code and if I have any mess here and any crazy thing happening which 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 is which means that the code is correct but I have extra spaces or anything crazy it's going to still correct it. So beautifiers are very important uh, when you write a code you want to beautify it and then you want to paste it. So that's how beautifier would work. Let's now try to see what's going to happen if we try to use uh, different uh, data types uh, so let's see what's going to happen if I use a double quote so I'm going to my DB fiddle uh, this is from the last uh, lecture where I've copied the create table command and let's go ahead and break this by writing double quotes and run it and it still works so they did not bother us with, with double quotes. Uh, now let's see what's going to happen. And this is a beauty about the evolving SQL language. If I try to put age, uh, which is defined as uh, an integer, it still allowed me to do that. Now let's see. If I say sum age which means that I want to take the sum of all the columns and be reminded I put age as string 32 and I run it and it gave me the sum of it so it's trying to convert a string into a number which is also called uh, casting uh, C A S T I N G. it's going to come up uh, but just wanted to throw that word uh, so that when you hear it multiple times remember that so uh, when I'm trying to put a number into double quotes, it's still working. Uh, it's converting that at the back end into a number, not bothering me. But I have to put uh, single quotes or double quotes inside uh, a string. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So always the string would come with the double quotes or a single quotes. And the numbers would not come with a quotes. Uh, as the evolution is happening, programming language are relaxing their criteria where single quotes and double quotes would mean the same thing. So that is not uh, given us. The color convention helps us to find out color convention for create table, insert table, delete table. Whenever we see that through the color convention, we find out this values is a reserved keyword. And all the reserved keyword that I'm using are capitalized. 
create table. It's a reserved keyword. It's not given by me. This is int. We did not talk about the primary key. Uh, we'll leave it for now. Uh, but it's something that's reserved. So everything that's reserved, which is a command by SQL that's getting capitalized and put it into blue. Whatever I'm giving, my names, my column names, I'm uh, putting it all lower cases so that my life is easy. So this is about uh, the language uh, basics. We are generally dealing with uh, three types of data, integer, character, and Boolean. Mostly integer and character. Boolean is still rare. Uh, we can use single quotes or double quotes. Uh, when we use quotes with a number at the back end, SQL is smart enough to convert that into a number. And color convention is very important. Capitalized, blue means a reserved keyword. String is generally turned into green and numbers are generally turned into blue. So that's the color convention. If something bad happened, if the quotes are missing, then we are not going to get a blue and we are going to get some other color. So this is lecture six. I'm on section two and lecture seven. Now lecture seven prepares you to run the code of lecture eight on your own, which would be your hands-on exercise. I'm going to run this code and in lecture eight, uh, uh, you have to copy and paste and run this code. So before I move ahead, I want to tell you what we have been doing in the last lecture. If you are following the last lecture, then in the last lecture, we got all of our code into uh, dbfiddle, which includes create table and, and the select statement. So you can find this text file in the courseware. Uh, it's called create db.txt, which is creating a table. I'm putting the create, insert, and the update in the schema, schema SQL, and I'm creating the query in the select star from attendees. Now, if the select star from attendees is working, then we are good to go. Let's check if we have the other table. So I'm going here and I'm writing select star from average salary. And I get the other table. Cool. So I have both the table. Let me let me show you what happens if you run both of these commands together. So if I run both of these commands, I did a control A and a control V in Windows. and Mac, it's command A and command V. Uh, so when I run both of them, I got both the tables, one below the other. So fantastic. This is working. So select star from and the table name selects uh, all the values. Star stands for everything. Star means all. So select everything from attendees. Select everything from average salary. Always use semicolon to end your statement so that my SQL understand that these are two separate statements. So select star from attendees work. Let's move ahead to the next command. Now, um, if we were to create a new column on the fly when we are getting the data, let me show you what I mean by that. I'm just running select star from attendees and I have how many columns? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten columns. Uh, if I want to create one more column and why would I do that? Let's look at it. Suppose somebody has got a lot of assets and he has got a very small salary which means that this guy has been very frugal and he's saving a lot of money. That's why he has low salary and high assets. That's a measure that I want to do for my people because uh, as I told you in the analytics world, we have to decide which data do we want and how to use that data to do something meaningful for our company. So maybe people who are more frugal are not going to come to my class that often because they want to save a lot of money. Maybe that's one parameter, who knows? Let's Let's keep that thing into our mind. So let's create a frugal parameter. To do that, go to calculation on columns, copy this code, and paste it on the right. And let's see what this code means. If you look at the color convention, select is blue, as is blue, from, order by, and DESC. All these are blue, which gives me a hint that all these are uh, SQL commands. All these are reserved keywords. So select star means select everything, comma, 
and now I'm calculating two columns. I'm saying go to the assets column and divide that by salary. So the first asset is 300,000 divided by salary. That's 10,000 10, for Spider-Man. Go to the next one. Assets is 700,000 divided by 10,700. That's for Superman. Go to the third one. The assets is 900,000 divided by salary, which is uh, 120,000 or 12,000. And once you do that, order that by the new column that you just created called frugal measure. So as a as as means an alias, you want to give a name to that column. So we gave a name to this newly calculated column, which is assets by salary as frugal measure. Once we did that, then we did an order by. Uh, order by, as you can guess from English, is to order all the records uh, using a column and DESC sends for descending. We're going to play with this code and that's what I want you to do and post any question. So let's run this and then you have to break that this code, tear it apart. So we have a frugal measure and since we did a descending, uh, the person who has the highest assets and the lowest salary kind of a ratio is the most frugal. So we found out that Batman is the most frugal with a frugal measure of 75. Uh, frugal measure that we wrote after as as is the column name. So let's see. So miserly measure. Let's assume I have this. The column name is going. So I got an error because the name I have to put here. I have to use here to order by. So I have to change it at two places and it's miserly measure. What's going to happen if I do an ascending order? So it's ASC. Now I get it in ascending order. So Wonder Woman is the least frugal. Maybe she'll come to my course. So I'm trying to make use of this data, creating new columns on the fly and writing ascending or descending to come up to a business solution that's going to help me to contact these people. So if I were to call or send my promotion and I had this data, I'm going to create a new calculated column and pursue people who are less frugal, maybe they'll come to my course. So that's the first part which is calculated on columns. Now let's see, suppose you want to find out uh, all the people um, uh, from the attendees uh, who come from the city where the average salary is greater than 10,000. So we have like four boroughs. We have Manhattan, Queens, Bronx, uh, uh, Brooklyn. And we want to first find out out of which boroughs we have average salary greater than 10,000. Once we find that out, we want to search only people who are in these cities. So here is how it works. Suppose uh, Manhattan and Brooklyn are high salaried places. Manhattan has got a high salary. Brooklyn has got a high salary, Queens has low and Bronx has low. So we want to only find people who came from Brooklyn and Manhattan. So first we want to find the cities and then we want to find the people from that city. So that is called a sub quarry. It's also called a quarry inside a quarry. Uh, let's paste this code and let's see if we can understand this code. And we are going to tear it apart. All of this course is about tearing the codes apart. Uh, now I'm going to click on run. Everything works and I got the people. If you observe these are from uh, we never saw what is the average salary. So let's try tearing this code apart. So select city So I, I broke it apart very carefully and I just got the thing that was inside the next quarry. This is sub quarry is like quarry inside a quarry. It's like the movie Inception where you have a dream inside a dream or it's like a virtual computer where you have a computer inside a computer. Uh, there are theories that suggest that we are living in a computer simulation which another simulation ran. So we are a simulation inside a simulation of some somebody's simulation. So this is quarry inside a quarry. A very famous concept uh, also called nested quarry in the computer programming world. So I'm saying that select city from average salary where average salary is greater than 10,000. And it says that there is no column city. So let's find out. So I'm trying to tear this code apart. 
select star from average salary so uh, you have uh, city 2 and you have four places if you see here Manhattan and Brooklyn have high salary so I'm going to write select city 2 from average salary so it's selecting all the cities now I'm going to write where average salary is greater than 10,000 I'm expecting only Brooklyn and Manhattan I got only Brooklyn and Manhattan. I'm going to put this inside parentheses because I want to use this list only Manhattan and Brooklyn and I'm going to say select star from attendees where I would like to remind you one thing many times we are not working with native pro native English speakers so they do a lot of spelling mistakes while creating these table names so always do a copy paste so I'm rather than writing attendees I would rather do a copy paste here so select star from attendees where and we want to write city in and this is going to give us two cities so in command is called an array command now I'm getting people only from Manhattan and Brooklyn so that's my code now now this is my code and we are in the chapter of uh, filtering and selection and you have to run this code so I'm going to give you this code which I'm going to put here for you So you have to run this code and make sure everything is working. Okay, what if we want to only select the odd number of people? So I want to introduce you to this concept where and I'm going to remove very select star from attendees. That's going to give me everything. And I want to remove only I want to remove people who are odd or even. I want to only get the even person ID or the odd person ID. So to do that, I am writing select star from attendees where mod. Mod is always going to give me the remainder. It's called modulus or remainder function. Where mod person ID comma 2 is equal to 0. Which means that where the remainder by 2 is equal to 0. So it's only going to give me the even number. If I say this is equal to 1 it's going to give me only the odd number so this is how I'm going to use uh, the even and the odd whenever you hear the term even or odd you have to think of the remainder function let's move to the next place uh, now we have to find out the person which is having the highest salary out of my attendees that's also very useful because I can pitch him to buy my course he has got a lot of money so these are the heroes that attended my class and I want to find out the person who has the highest salary so first I'm going to write select max of salary from attendees but this is going to give me the max salary I want to find out the person who has this salary so I'm going to write select star from and this is the dream inside the dream the world inside the world the simulation hypothesis where attendees were salary equal to or I would al also write in so whenever you use a subquery you have to write in or if you write equal to you have to put in brackets so X man has the highest salary you see we started with this command select max salary this gave us only the salary which was 12,500 then we went here and then we said select star from attendees where salary equal to this 12,500 
So these are called nested query. These are very important interview question. How do you find out uh, the person who has the highest salary? How do you find out the second highest salary? Not the person, but the second highest salary. So that is another interview question. How do you find out the person with the second highest salary? So there is a trick behind that. We are going to find out the max salary and we are going to exclude X, X man because he has the highest salary. So select max salary from attendees where salary not in. So this is the trick to find out the second highest salary. So another interview question and I'm going to uh, put this question in my final uh, interview questions. Okay, so that's the person with the max salary and the second highest salary. Not the person who has it, but just the second highest salary. Then we have casting. Casting is like molding an iron into something. So whenever you want to concatenate two number, when you want to put two columns beside each other, and these are mostly for optics. So when you have When you have this table and you want to concatenate and write and write everybody's name and age you want to create a new column so if I say select hero name comma age it's going to display me two columns but I don't want the two columns I want them to be in one column I want them to be stacked across each other like spider-man space 32 how would I do that so to do that, first we have, we have to create everything into a character. Once we have the character, then we can do that. So suppose I want to find out the salary and I want to use the notation K, like 100K or 200K because it's painful for me to read the assets like this. I don't want to count the number of zeros. So how would I do that? I'm going to first uh, cast or force the assets into a number and then I'm going to concatenate it with K. So this is my 300.00K. So that's called casting and concatenation. We are going a little faster here. We never talked about these two terms but just I want you to quickly dive into casting and concatenation. And then the last statement that we want to quickly know here is called a case statement. A case statement is a statement where it's like if else. So whenever we find, find city equal to Q, then we want to write Queens, else we have to write other city. So an else, if else statement in a Python is called the case statement in SQL. So we want to select a hero and if he's from Queens, we write Queens. Otherwise, uh, we write other city. So Spider-Man, other city. Superman, other city. Batman, Queens. X-Men, other city. Wonder Man, other city. So that's called case statement. Case when city equal to Q, then Queens, else, other city. So it's, it's used a lot whenever you want to do an element by element stuff using an if else. So these are the very common filtering and selection that we are going to do with our data, massaging our data. Right now we are only playing with one table and we'll see how to join different tables and we have to see how to use aggregate function which is coming in the next class. Okay. In this lecture, we are going to look at group by. Group by are also called the aggregation or grouping of stuff. Whenever you do an aggregation or group by, two questions you have to ask. Group by what? What? W-H-A-T. What do you want to group by? Once you know that, then you can move ahead. Let's look at our data and find out what are the questions that we might ask. So I have a data of people who attended my session and what do I want to group by? Maybe, let's think about it. Maybe I want to group by and find out that people who attended uh, my class from Brooklyn, what was the average salary of those guys, of people who attended my class on 
from based on cities. You know, I, I'm making a guess that ma people who attended my session from Manhattan had a higher salary and uh, followed by Brooklyn, followed by uh, Bronx, followed by Queens, but who knows? Uh, or maybe I can uh, group them by sector. Maybe tech people are earning more or maybe finance people are earning more. So I want to group by sector and find out the average salary. Maybe I want to find out the average age. Now, I already have some idea in my mind. For example, I have an idea that people attending my session from Manhattan have higher salary, Queens have low, and I know a kind of a order. I have an idea that people who work in tech these days are having higher salary than finance. So if I find out the average salary of people grouped by sector, I'll find out that all the averages of people of tech sector is less. I also have a little idea about age. I know that tech people are young. So people who attended my session, if I group uh, and find out their age uh, by sector, I'll see that the tech sector average age was less and the finance sector average age is higher. Uh, so on and so forth. I, ha I have my business questions in my mind. I have some idea. I want to make sure that uh, are these things matching with my data? If it's not, then I have other questions to answer. So let's go ahead and run the first query, which is select sector, average age, and let's understand the syntax of this group by. So a group by always has two things. First is your aggregation. And the next is by what you are grouping by. What is the question? What do you want me to group by? So I'm saying that select me, uh, give me the sectors and calculate the average salary. That's the aggregation function that I want you to perform from attendees and group by sector. And before I see the result, my intuition would say that uh, people who work in IT right now have, have higher salary or things like that. Let's go ahead and run this. And we get, oops, let's see what's the error. So I know what the error is. We have to always follow the exact uh, name of the table. So Finn guys have 150 and tech guys have 67. That's the average age or the average salary. So Finn guys are older, tech guys are younger. Uh, my data is fictitious, but that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next group by. Uh, I can also use a max asset so I can find out the max assets from each sector. So this time I'm not finding out an average, but I'm finding out the max assets by each sector. So I want to find out like who, who earned more money based on the asset. What is the maximum? So I assume that uh, tech people are not able to make money. So I think that uh, the max in IT would be higher. Uh, max in finance should be higher than the max in tech. So in all the financial world, if I go and find out the maximum assets, it's nine nine hundred thousand. But in tech, it's only seven hundred thousand. Here, my aggregation function is max. It's not average. If I change this to average, it's going to give me the average assets of uh, all the sectors. So. The first is the aggregation function. What do you want to do? Do you want to do average? Do you want to do min? Do you want to do max? And the next question is, what do you want to group by? Let's see what's going to be the kind of error if I don't use an aggregation function because our way of learning is tearing it apart. And it says that it you are getting something uh, group by clause contains non-aggregated column. You did not give me what columns to aggregate which means that the aggregation column is missing. Let's remove the group by and see what's the error. So then the error would be uh, query with group by select list contain non-aggregated column incompatible. And the idea is that you gave me an aggregation, but you never gave me what to group by. And SQL cannot understand. So we have to be careful of what we want. Let's try to revise this and see the syntax. So the syntax is select column name from table where group by having order by. 
And one of the very high frequency interview question is the difference between where and having. And let's try to make sense of that. Right now we just did a group by. Before grouping by, we can filter our results, which means that before grouping by, we can filter out the results. We don't want to take poor people or we don't want to take uh, people who got a discount or who came to my class for free or something like that. Then do a group by and then use a having, co having which is another filtering measure to filter on the calculated column, which is the average min max and then order by ascending or descending. Let's try to slowly go inside this. Let's look at this. Let's first understand what is order by. So if I say that uh, select sector and average. So if I say that select sector and average from attendees group by sector order by average assets then it first does the aggregation and then do the tag. Let's assume after grouping by and I had many sectors I wanted to ignore some of the sectors where after the group by the average salary does not cause a threshold so I would say that where uh, I cannot use a where on an aggregated column because average assets is an aggregated column so I'm going to say having average assets greater than and in this case if I put 400,000 tag is going to vanish so that's what happened so let's paste this code there as an example so whenever I'm using group by and I'm using an aggregated column I have to make sure that I use a having which is like where but having works only on calculated column so you have to remember that having is going to work only on calculated column now you have to tear this code apart and understand if I don't use this having I'm not filtering post group by after group by I'm going to get both the values there are two more examples of having that we are going to see. Let's assume that we want to only talk about my attendees who are greater than 35. We want to find out their average salary. And we only want to see the sectors where the average salary is higher. So we have a having which is always working with a calculated column. This is brief, pre group by. So even before I group by, I don't want to take people who are less than 35. So that's pre-filtering or pre-group by and having is post-group by. So the final and the longest or the, the thing that I want to touch is that you have select from where group by having an order by. And having always work with uh, a calculated column. Otherwise, uh, it gives you an error if you try to put a where. Let's go ahead and see the error. So if by mistake I put a where here, which also works as the same one, it's going to give me an error. It's not able to find out the exact error, but it's going to give me an error that the problem is with where, the next where. And then I'll remember that, oh, having should, I should have used having because this is, an, this is a calculated column. This is already aggregation that's performed. Where is used before the group by. So that's the group by and having. The high frequency question in the interview is the difference between having and where. Why do you use having? So having is used when you want to do calculated column after grouping by. So that's where you're going to use having. Okay, we are on section 3, lecture 12. This lecture is about joints and union. So we did a group by in the last lecture. Group by is really the same thing as pivot tables in Excel. Pivot tables don't get refreshed in the older Excel. It's, it's kind of messy, but you can do 
a lot of things that you do in pivot table by group by not everything but a lot of stuff now we are looking at joints and union so when i hear about joints i want to link it to we look up and edge lookups because you want to join and capture data from two tables you want to join it to your master table or your source table so let's see what we have to understand that we have to understand how many tables do we have here so i do a, i am just scrolling down i have create table attendees i have create table average sally and average sally let me talk about uh, why we are doing this so I have people attending my class and uh, I want to pitch my course I want to invest I want to call the right people I got the data from the census website about the average salary of cities or boroughs here so I got the average salary of Manhattan Brooklyn Queens and what I'm doing is that when I want to compare whether somebody is rich enough or has disposable income to attend my course I compare their salary with the average salary of the respective borrower. Just imagine if somebody has a high salary but he's living in Manhattan, which means that he does not have any disposable salary to come and spend for my course. Somebody's living in Queens, he has a low salary, but the average salary of Queens is low, and his low is higher than the average salary of Queens, which means he has disposable amount. So that's the whole criteria. So I'm I want to join uh, and put the average salary table just across my main table of attendees which I'm going to do by copy pasting my code and searching for the common column. So I'm saying select star from attendees, full outer join, uh, average salary on and I want to join on attendees.city and average salary.city. So let me correct this small error which means this should be together and let's try to see what it gives it gives me an error so select star from attendees I'm going to remove full outer join because full outer join is not supported by MySQL full outer join is only supported by SQL server so I got a new column called average salary for each respective borrow. That's why it keep on repeating. For Brooklyn, it's 11,000. Here, Brooklyn is 11,000. Manhattan is 12,000. So I have joined them. And by default, it is inner join. So that code, full outer join, is not supported by MySQL. Full outer join is only supported by uh, MySQL. Oh, sorry, Microsoft SQL Server. So I'm going to put here that below works with MySQL and this is for SQL Server as full outer join not supported in MySQL. So that's part one. Let's understand part two. Uh, if I want to first filter and then join, then I'm going to write a where command. Uh, after writing a where command, I will create a table because I, I want to use that table and then I want to join. So to do that, I have to use alias, which means that the thing inside this bracket is going to be a table which has attendees where age is greater than 60 and then I'm going to join so that is filtering and joining now if I want to stack across two table one below the other then I'm going to use union all union all stacks one thing below the other so when I run it it's going to give it's going to put one thing below the other it says average salary 2 does not exist because that is because of uh, the case sensitive aspect and my uh, 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 beautifier so now it puts everything below the difference between union and union all let's see so I have Manhattan Brooklyn Queens Long Island Manhattan Brooklyn Bronx so union is uh, union is giving me Manhattan Brooklyn Queens Long Island 
uh, and Brooklyn and if you see here Brooklyn here has 11,000 and Brooklyn here comes again as 11,000 let's change this 11,000 to 10,000 and see if it gets repeated so Union avoids uh, it's it's putting everything below that so it's just stacking one thing below the other if I say Union all and if the salaries are same it's going to give me a duplicate value so I'm using Union all and I'm running and you're going to see duplicate values of Brooklyn so Brooklyn is 11,000 Brooklyn is 11,000 while Union is going to ignore that because if it's the same entry why do I even care so I had the salary from last year and I got an update but I want to keep only the new stuff in that case I'm going to use Union uh, if I want to display and see the duplicate values then I'm going to use Union All so that's the difference between Union and Union All Union All is going to show you everything as the name suggests it's all so it's going to give me even even you the repeated stuff but Union is not going to give you the repeated stuff it's going to give you unique stuff so that's Union and Union All remember that Union is putting things below the other and uh, it's like adding new records while joins is like we look up which you can do using uh, joins in a much more comprehensive way you're using pivot table in Excel which you can cover by group by it's like automating a lot of stuff and working with a larger amount of data I want you to practice how to say things in English if I say calculated average salary it would be select average salary uh, calculated average salary for all sectors so it would be group by sectors uh, put across uh, rating or uh, put across something from another table and bring it here it's like join so these are the things that I want you to be comfortable with where you can think about joins and group by and union if you have new data and you want to stack it across just below your old data which means that I'm talking about union. Union is like uh, putting new data below your old data. So uh, these are the terms that I want you to have an idea about. Uh, the other thing that I am I want you to check out is uh, the 10 post queries that you have to study. So the top 10 queries include uh, uh, everything that we have studied including filtering, including group by, um, including uh, uh, a lot of things so these are your top 10 queries for revision uh, this is the same code that I have been using and when you scroll down you are going to see code uh, which starts with filtering sub queries uh, joins and group by uh, remainder function which you can check out this file is being uploaded here in your courseware page so you can download this